if something terrible happens to you, you should never ever forget it, because if you forget it, you may walk into it again. This is basically because we have not taught our children and the people in the world how to employ our faculties, then everything hurts. My next question to you, Sadhguru, is um, when something bad happens to somebody and uh, we know that it's always on their conscious, like conscience, they're thinking about it a lot of times, but eventually there comes a point where they are ready to let it go. They don't want to let, let the past go because they feel guilty of letting it go. So why does that happen and how do we let go of that guilt? Like even if we take, for instance, sexual abuse, if a girl is sexually abused and eventually if she reaches a point where she is ready to overcome it, but she feels guilty to let it go because it has troubled her for a very, very long time and not just her, the ones around her as well. So is it right to let it go at that point or like how, do, how does one deal with a situation like this? See, I think this struggle is coming from a misunderstanding that something either unpleasant or terrible that one may encounter in one's life, it can just happen to anybody in so many different ways. If it happens, people think they must forget it. No, you should never forget it. If something terrible happens to you, you should never ever forget it. Because if you forget it, you may walk into it again. But we must know the distinction between what is memory and what is living. You are living. Memory is a dead memory. You are supposed to use it as wisdom to see such things don't happen to you in your life. But… but it's a fact that for most people, what happened ten years ago, they still suffer. Hmm? What may happen day after tomorrow, they already suffer? Yes or no? <laughs> what happened ten years ago or even ten days ago does not exist right now, does it? Does it? No. What may happen day after tomorrow does not exist right now, does it? No. So you are suffering essentially something that does not exist. How many of you are psychology students, huh? Is there a, a medical term for those people who are suffering something that does not exist? No, no, don't tell them please, they'll suffer that <laughs> If you are suffering something that does not exist, on some level it means insanity, isn't it? This may sound very cruel to you right now when I say this, because, oh, I got my pains. See, you are… you are carrying your pains like badge, don't do that. When something bad happens to us, when something hurts us, we can either become wise or wounded, this is a choice we have. Either we can become wise with it or we can become wounded with it. As we already went through this, life is just a certain amount of time, it's ticking away. As you sit here now, you are one hour closer to the grave since you came here. Yes or no? Yes, it is. It's going away for all of us. So in this, where is the time to carry every experience like a wound? No. This must become your wisdom. If terrible things happen to you, you must become wiser than others, sooner than others, isn't it? But unfortunately, most people choose to become wounded simply because, again, in our systems of education, we have done nothing about the nature of human mind. We are busy studying frogs and cockroaches and trees and chemistry and physics and planets and everything. No attention to the nature of this one. So we don't know how to use our faculties. The greatest faculties that you have right now as a human being is, you have a vivid sense of memory. Everything that happened, you can remember as if it's alive right now. Yes, there is a repository here, there is an archive in your mind which can replay the whole video if you want. 
but this has become a problem. You started suffering the old movies. And there is a fantastic sense of imagination, so you already suffer a tomorrow which is yet to come. This is basically because we have not taught our children and the people in the world how to employ our faculties, how to use our memory, how to use our imagination, how to experience life right now, how to sharpen the experience now. Your whole life is happening between these three dimensions – memory, present experience and imagination. This is your life, isn't it? These are three dimensions. We call them trikala, three dimensions of time. All your experience of life is happening here, but if you lose distinction between what is past, what is present, what is future, then everything hurts. But not everybody terrible things have happened. Unfortunately, for a few people it, they have happened. But the rest of the people are simply suffering something, isn't it? Because it's fashionable to suffer. People think if they're suffering, they are very intellectual, they are very profound. No, it's just stupid because you're suffering something that doesn't exist. You are not suffering what's happening right now. You're suffering what happened yesterday and you're suffering something that may happen tomorrow already. So, this madness has been encouraged simply because we never train people how to use their faculties. Do you agree with me that this human machine that you carry and I carry, this is the most sophisticated machine on the planet? Hello? Yes. Have you read the user's manual? User's manual, have you read? No. When are you going to read it? On the last day. <laughs> if you get a phone, if you buy a phone, should you read the user's manual in the first three days or after three years when you're discarding the phone? Earliest, isn't it? Within the first day you must read, then only you can use this phone well. The same goes for this. If you do not understand the nature of what this is, how will you put this to use? It is consuming you, your own intelligence is consuming you. You can call it stress, anxiety, pain, suffering, whatever. Essentially, your intelligence is turned against you, that's all the reality is. If your intelligence was working for you, taking instructions from you, you would keep yourself blissed out, wouldn't you? Hello? Your intelligence is turned against you. Why has your intelligence turned against you? That's what you need to look at not about carrying these things that have happened which should not have happened as badges in our life. This may get a lot of women against me. <laughs>